Do you hear me well and see my screen? That's perfect. Yeah, uh, so uh, hi everyone, I'm Mikhail and my talk is about how to extend Python using Rust. First, I'm gonna go through uh, reasoning for such a thing. Um, then uh, why Rust is such a great choice for this uh, task. Uh, then we'll go through um, some libraries that provide bindings from Rust to Python. Then we'll switch to demo and build a dynamic library that we then can load into Python. Um, then we'll uh, build and run a simple web service example that uses uh, both Rust and Python code. And uh, we'll build and run it using uh, Docker. And finally, we will compile and uh, build a pip package um, that contains both Python and Rust code. So what would you even want to extend Python? First of all, uh, most obvious probably uh, reason would be speed because Python is great, uh, but um, it's uh, easy to use, but that comes at a cost. Uh, the dynamic nature of Python means it's, uh, it runs on the very high level and it's very slow at some things. Um, so you possibly might uh, speed up, speed, speed it up with um, an extension. Then reusability, uh, why would you want to, you, you don't have to necessarily port the whole code to Python if your main code base in Python. You can just use some uh, code written in uh, another language from Python. For example, uh, large parts of NumPy or SciPy uh, still written in Fortran. And if you, when you install these uh, packages, you will see how Fortran is compiled. Um, the next reason would be a cooperation. For example, when a, in your company, one team might work uh, in Rust and another in Python, and uh, would be nice to find a way for them to use code each other, each other's code. Um, another reason might be uh, migration. Uh, suppose for some tragic reason you want to rewrite your whole project uh, from Python into say Rust, then you don't have to do that all at once. You might uh, do it uh, module by module and then import what's already ported into what's, uh, what's you still have in Python. So how you might approach this? Uh, first and a classic way would be to write an extension C or C++. It's, uh, Python provides a great um, bindings for that. Uh, the thing is that uh, writing something in C or C++, it's uh, cumbersome, let's say that, and um, not exactly safe in terms of memory management. So. Uh, another way would be to apply some uh, Python improvers, I would say, um, like a Cyton that recompiles your Python code in uh, C somehow, or uh, the newer uh, library called Number that JIT compiles your Python. That um, uh, if your only goal is speed, it's a, it's a, it's a nice uh, way of. Uh, doing things, but I would be wary of doing that on large projects because it's a, you lose control uh, of how your code is run uh, because these libraries perform some magic on your code. Um, why Rust? Uh, Rust, uh, well, uh, I have to say I'm not an expert in Rust. I'm, I've, been used in, I've been using it as uh, my hobby language for some time. And uh, I think it's absolutely great. Uh, it's a um, systems um, language uh, compiled and uh, fairly low level, but um, it, uh, it uses um, a very innovative um, system of borrowing 
basically uh, uh, it controls the memory management at uh, compile time so if you uh, don't properly manage the memory it uh, just will refuse to compile your code and uh, rust is uh, rust is uh, uh, maintained by uh, mozilla and it is uh, voted as a uh, one of the most loved uh, languages by developers and um, recently it gets a lot of attention from companies too notably microsoft and what is important for in our case um, it uh, that is that rust has a very minimal runtime so no garbage collector no anything like that that will run in parallel to your code uh, if you load your uh, compiled code uh, extension code into python you will not have anything else rather than your code running inside the python interpreters this uh, which will be not true for uh, garbage collector garbage collected languages but um i wouldn't as i said i'm not a rust expert i wouldn't uh, write the whole project in rust because it's um it's uh it uh, python has its uh, advantages as a um uh, as a in, in terms of development development speed uh most of all so it would be nice to maybe write some uh, critical code in rust and uh, just uh, load in into python and uh, some common code like a uh, web service or uh, cli you can write in python it's not um maybe um performance critical or uh, safety critical so um how would we do that um there is a few there's a type of uh, uh, rust libraries that allow you to build a python extension for first of all it's uh, rust c python uh, we're going to use it in the examples uh, during this talk um, and then pio3 which is a fork of the previous one um it the, the, the reason I used Rusty Python because that's because uh, um, PyO3 works only on nightly Rust and uh, Rusty Python works on the uh, works on stable Rust as well. I actually I have seen that PyO3 recently migrated to stable Rust. Uh, I mean uh, it can be run on stable Rust as well, but it, I just didn't have time to check. Um, they they both libraries are very similar because uh, one is the fork of another, obviously um uh, they also uh, give you uh, ability to run python scripts uh, from rust but it's it's uh, really out of scope uh, for this talk um we're gonna use uh, I, i'm not gonna uh, go through uh, setting up rust and uh, syntax and so on um there's plenty of information online. I would recommend reading uh, Rust book or and uh, cargo book. Um, the Rust is pretty nicely documented. Um, I just say I will just say that uh, we we're going to use Cargo, that is um, package manager and uh, general CLI for um, uh, Rust. Um, oh. Okay, so let's switch to uh, demo now. Um, hope you see my dev environment well. So let's look at um, our Rust project. I created a very small, very simple example Rust project, and it basically it consists of if we disregard the uh files like git ignore and stuff it consists only on of um two files the first is lib.rc which contains our um, rust code and uh, another is cargo tomo which is a, a metadata fail um, sorry <laughs> metadata file 
So uh, lib.rs um, contains the Rust code. So here's all our whole Rust code. Just one, again, I'm not gonna uh, go into details on Rust uh, syntax. It's, well, if you worked with the um, C style languages before, it's pretty uh, obvious what's, what's that, what, and it's also some, somehow resembles uh, Python in some ways. Uh, for example, the typing uh, syntax. So uh, the first line uh, says that we are going to use um, C Python create. Create is a package, uh, is a Rust term for package. We're going to import these uh, things. Um, then we um, run the Py module uh, initializer macros that uh, creates um, Python extension wrapper for us. Uh, we create a, a doc um, attributes with some helper string here for Python to see, and we export a get result function that Python will be able to use. Uh, uh, then we have our actual uh, function. It will return, it, it, it accepts a string and then returns the uh, same string back to the caller prepended by last says. That's all it does. So um, it uh, returns actually a pi result, uh, which is a wrapper for. Um, uh, Rust types that uh, kind of converts them into uh, Python types that uh, so that is transparent for Python. So that's all here and then cargo tomo uh, set up some metadata like um, name of the library, my credentials, um, name of the crate and uh, this is important it says that uh, uh, we, the resulting library will be a dynamic library that it's not statically linked by, but uh, dynamically loaded into uh, runtime. It, it, uh, so it will be a D dot .dll file on Windows or dylib uh, here on Mac or um, uh, .so file on uh, Linux. Uh, for some reason, Python only. Well, uh, so for, so, okay. So for some reason, Python only understands uh, .so files. So we're gonna rename the file. So uh, let's build the the Rust project. It's uh, gonna cd to the Rust uh, library, and everything that we need to do is to run cargo build, and we. Uh, indicate that we will build for the release, so no debug information. And basically it's it's done. Uh, so here in the target directory, you can see it built our, uh, our binary. It's a dynamic library that you can use already. It, it's a, it is a Python extension already. So I, as I said, we can't use it right now. So we're gonna, we're gonna uh, copy it on the top level and rename it as a mylib.so. So now, now it is very simple. We, we run the Python, Python three uh, interpreter and we can just import mylib here. And it imports. You can see that help my leap will show our help string and that the function get result is available here. So then we can run my leap get result. Hey, um, no, it's a typo. So yeah, so we just run the Rust code from Python. Now, uh, now we're gonna remove that file. It's not needed anymore. So uh, this is 
Nice, but how we, um, let, let, let's look at a more real world example. So here in the web, uh, in the web folder, I created a small web uh, project. Uh, I use Flask and I import the same uh, library here. And it, when you call the main uh, uh, endpoint, it will just return the result of my lib get result, hello. Um, so how can we run it from here? So let's use uh, Docker. We're gonna use a multi-stage build uh, technique. So because uh, when we are gonna run um, Python um, environment to run our uh, web, uh, web um, service, we not the, we don't want to have Rust uh, and all the Rust machinery in our Docker container there. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna use the first uh, stage uh, from we uh, pull the Rust um, <clears throat> Docker image and we give uh, the stage a name Rust build. So then we can just uh, copy our two files. And then we uh, set up the target. The thing is that um, previously I ran it and I ran the example on my uh, MacBook. So I used the Mac uh, OS uh, compatible binary, but uh, the Rust, uh, the Python 3.7 Slim image is a Linux environment that is uh, Debian, I think. So we're gonna build for Linux now. So it's, it's very easy for with cargo, you just set the target and you will have the um, right binary on as an output. So then we go to the next uh, final stage of our build. We copy our Python um, uh, file, then we, we copy the requirements file and then from the previous stage, we copy the library uh, we built. Uh, is the same way as I did uh, locally. Uh, it will the, it will be done in a Docker environment, but uh, this time it's called .so because it's it's built on Linux. Um, but in the end, it's the same mylib.so. So then we install the libraries and run the service with the with the G Unicorn to have it uh, production uh, in a production manner. So we're gonna just build it like this. It uses a lot of caches uh, and it's fine because we don't have much time. Um, it copies the library and so now we can run this, uh, the, we can run this uh, image and we're gonna expose the port 8000 for tests. Right, so let's uh, see how it goes and it works. It's uh, so the Rust says part comes from the Rust library and hello comes from the Python part of the code. Let's kill it now. Right. So you can build it as you can build it like that, but um, the thing is that. Um, Imagine uh, there, you work in a company and you work on, uh, primarily in Python and uh, there is this project that contains Rust code as well. And you have to um, maintain all this uh, Rust building part. So probably you don't wanna do this every time. You want to do uh, pip install my lib and uh, have it, uh, installed on your machine. So you don't have to even think about uh, cargo and uh, stuff from the Rust world. This can be achieved with the uh, Python packages. 
So uh, here in the package directory, I have the same, same, vib same last quote is exactly the same. Uh, Cargatomal is exactly the same. The only thing that I added uh, a few files here for a uh, peak package machinery. Um, and uh, the main file is setup.py, uh, which will build the Python package um, for us. Um, we're gonna use the library called setup tools Rust uh, that provides a binding class and a Rust extension class. So apart from the from um, packaging the Python code, it will build uh, the Rust extension for us. And we'll use the binding Rust C Python, um, which we use, but it uh, can be set as PyO3 as well, and we want to use PyO3. So it will build it and include the Rust binary for us in the package. So for this, we gonna, Let's create a virtual environment for us. Now. Come on. Right. Okay, so we can activate the environment. And now we can just go to the package directory and run pip in pip install dot and we will see We will see, so it's building the it's building uh, the package called Miley Rust and it's it's built the wheel for uh, us. The wheel is a, it's a format WHL extension. It's basically an archive with the binary and uh, Python code together uh, for Python 3.7 because it's my uh, current version of Python and for Mac OS because I'm running it on my um, um, uh, MacBook. So this, uh, uh, what it just did, it built the package uh, from from um, sources. That means you gonna have to have a Rust on your machine. But at least you can import my leap. Something then to run. Um, ah, yeah, I, I know what, what it is. I just need to go up and then it will import it from the environment. Yeah. So my leap result. All right, but um, the point is that it's, um, it builds the thing from, um, from sources, uh, which, is a, which provides a lot of complications as well. Um, uh, what we can do now, we can pre-build the wheels and um, 
um, and upload them to some uh, to uh, PyPy repository. And then when you uh, run pip install uh, mylib uh, rust, it will uh, download, it will automatically select the will um, supported by your environment and your uh, Python version and they will download it for you. Uh, so you don't have to have uh, Rust installed on your machine. It's the same way, uh, same way as it uh, works for uh, um, C extensions. So I'm I don't have time to really do that now, but I will just show. Um, so I can build uh, things for macOS using the setup.py uh, dist uh, will. It will build this dist. Uh, it will build the will for me like this. It's a, a will for my from my macOS. But uh, suppose I want to do that for my uh, little web service. So uh, now I can use um, a different way. I can just uh, build it, upload uh, somewhere, and uh, I can remove the first uh, Rust uh, build stage and install it from requirements txt, where I have just where I have just this. So uh, in order to achieve that, I will need to pre-build the, the uh, wheels for Linux um, and upload it to somewhere. Somewhere would be the test uh, PyPy uh, website in my case. It's a, a playground for Python package developers uh, um, uh, that you can use, uh, they they clean it up uh, once in a while, but uh, you can upload packages there and test it before polluting the actual global repository. Or in your company, you might have uh, your own uh, mirror or your own uh, private uh, PIP uh, repository where you can store your packages. So I, I created the, uh, my Librast here and uh, uh, uploaded the wheels uh, for that library. So it's uh, macOS here and uh, Linux here. So I don't really have time for that. Uh, so uh, to upload it, you can use the tool called Twine and uh, uh, you can uh, to build for Linux on macOS. You can use a Docker image called Many Linux. Um, uh, the the tricky part with Linux is that um, there is lots of repositories and uh, they differ from one another. And um, the many Linux project claims that it won't maybe cover all the Linux repositories, but it it, it covers enough to to call themselves uh, many Linux. So. Uh, to build for Linux, I'm gonna pull that many Linux image and run my build inside the Docker container. And I'm gonna run this. I'm not gonna run it, but I, I, I would normally run this build wheels script, which uh, what it does, it installs uh, Rust and Cargo. And then it goes through all the Python uh, versions present and build wills with the same command we would use locally. It just uh, builds uh, the wills for this. Uh, Hi, Mikhail. Uh, apologies for interrupting you in between your talk. It was going nicely, but we have gone much uh, much ahead of the time. Uh, yeah, yeah. There are so, two or three questions uh, that people have raised, so maybe we can focus on them. Uh, and then you can take the questions in the breakout channel. Yeah, uh, I, I'm gonna post a, a link to my to my GitHub repo with all the code uh, there, and uh, we 
uh, and also uh, uh, everything will be in the Discord breakout channel. Um, right. So sorry for the for uh, apologies for that. It was really going great, but we are short of time. Uh, we have three questions here. Uh, one is from Matthew. He is asking uh, that the flow uh, with which uh, Fortran uh, gets uh, Python gets extended with Fortran using F2Py is slightly different from what you showed for Rust. So, is it because of setup tools Rust uh, library? Well, uh, probably yes, because uh, we use setup tools Rust for Rust, and uh, there is something specific for um, for Fortran built by NumPy developers. I, I I can I can post a link in the Discord channel. I, I have a link uh, for the tool they use for Fortran. Okay, right. And uh, Radu is actually asking of quoting some examples where you would actually write a specific Python module in form of Rust. So, uh, kind of rewriting the specific module, the Python module in Rust. What can be the use case for it? Um, the use case, for, for example, uh, you have a well, uh, you can just uh, want to speed up your Python code, then you can uh, rewrite it in uh, Rust in the more low, le uh, low level language. Or uh, sometimes if the code is critical and you, you uh, want to have more control over it, the statically typed language would be better than Python. It, it doesn't mean you have to rewrite everything in uh, the systems language. Right. Thanks a lot for answering these questions. Uh, I think we are running really short of time. So I have to uh, onboard the next speakers. Uh, yeah. So thanks a lot, Mikhail, for such an interesting talk. Uh, people can further ask you questions in the breakout channel. I'll post the link to same uh, in the Microsoft track. Yeah. Thanks Thank a lot. you that for uh, attending. Interesting. Yeah.